OT baby, thank you for joining us today uh, for Outnumbered Overtime. I can see the conversation has already begun. With We're tens of thousands of people, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, um, 11,700 at this very moment. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of people talking about Elizabeth Warren um, and have some choice, interesting words that we, we <laughs> oh, may no. or may not share, but uh, chime in on the conversation. Bernie Sanders is a, is a hot topic. Uh, progressivism. I will let you know when I have something. Uh, somebody says my sandwich is calling. Nice show. Oh, thank you for. Thank I mean, you know, I'm hungry as well. But time. before we get to that, no, we were having a very spirited conversation about we were. what it takes. Yes. Yeah, that, we were. About what it takes to win in this day and age, and I think it's about passion. It's about having that person that really ignites a common, a core audience, who's very fired up. For them, that the mistake that's being made right now is the idea of trying to be broad. That when you try to appeal to a bunch of different groups, you just end up being watered down. But you, you know, disagree? you think of the. I, I'm old enough to remember the Ronald Reagan years, and when you think of that combination of both good policy or policy that led to economic growth and a winning personality, isn't that really the best? I mean, you have some people that do have a winning personality have, have bad policy, like I think Obama. You have some people that have winning personality, but not necessarily the best well, policy. But but uh, what you really should have is both. We, right, we might need to get a in your opinion. <laughs> we might need to get a side by side eventually of this because Waterford 5301 has weighed in saying, is it just me or does David Asman look exactly like Stephen Colbert? <laughs> Wow. I don't know if that's As, a compliment. Have you ever gotten that one? It's a compliment. It is a compliment. Really? I think it's a compliment. You might not agree with his sort of like yeah. politics or whatnot. I'll have to think about that. You know that who's one. friends with him? Martha McCallum. Oh, really? Very good yeah. friends. Yeah. 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 Heard that. Away Go figure. So, wow. back to this whole idea of anyway. personality and policy. I think this is very interesting because it, it was amazing to see how Donald Trump really broke through in so many ways. And, and frankly, Bernie Sanders broke through, right? Because we're yeah. all scratching our heads saying, how can a socialist be breaking through? And I think you're on to something, Melissa, because I really do think it comes down to personality and star power. And people want to be, um, they want to think that that person understands them. As far as the policy goes, look, I think most Americans, when push comes to shove, if you say to them, hey, you know, you're going to earn $200 this week, should the government take 100 of it? They'd say, no, right. I want to keep as right. much of that $200 as I possibly can. And so that may just be something that's intrinsic to who we are. It's part of our culture. It's part of what has made this nation so great, this freedom of opportunity and market-based policies. So at our core, we do believe that. So if you combine that with the right personality to sell it, you got some. Personality, star power, but the ability to sell the message. And right now, yeah. isn't yeah. that the problem? They haven't perfected that message or even really come up with it. it. But here, to tease yeah. out the conversation you guys were having about broad versus narrow and the messaging, yeah. here's a good thought exercise would be Donald Trump was very successful in his campaign. How do you perceive was his messaging broad or was it? I think it was narrow. Specific. You know what I like? It was narrow, it was but he popped exactly. Yeah. That makes it broad, right? I don't think so. No? I mean, I don't think it makes it broad in the sense that I don't think he was trying to appeal to a lot of different groups. I think he was trying to appeal to populace. And he happened to hit a group that was passionate about him and believed that he believed in their message and their policy and he was going to affect it. I mean, populace, if you said ahead of time and you didn't know the candidates, a populist is going to win the Republican nomination, and then a populist is going to win the general election. We all would have said, "What? You know, that's not yeah. a road to go down." Similarly, There's you would say, "Not a majority." A socialist that, you know, is going to yeah. get very close to getting the Democratic nomination if you know they, if the party hadn't thrown it, you know, for Hillary Clinton. You wouldn't say that based on their policy, but I think both things are like when you really hone in on that message. He was like, "I am for working people." You are forgotten. You aren't forgotten by me. I'm for you. And that working people, populist. Well, that, that was, was what it. he was for. He was also saying, and I am against the swamp, and I'm going to get rid of the swamp because well, most people. Americans agree yeah. that government does not spend your money well. They're spending other people's money. They don't care about the quality of how it's spent. They don't care about if too much is spent. Uh, that's the problem with government spending your money, whereas in a business, you do care a lot about how the money is spent and how much is spent. So who could deal with your money better? Uh, put it back in the private sector through tax cuts or give more of it to the government. And I think most people, if they, if he just explained it clearly well, like Mitt that, Romney which he can do, it. he would sell the Mitt message. Mitt Romney had that message and it didn't 
work, right? He, because true. he didn't have the appeal. He no, didn't he have didn't have the populist appeal. Uh, yeah. Star power, popularity right. test. You need both. Type of thing. Yeah. So yeah. do you guys agree with, with Melissa's perspective on that, that President Trump's yeah. messaging was narrow, it was, it was specific? Well, it was. It certainly was populist because he was he was saying what a lot of people want to hear that that the problems there, are, the problems in the world, the, the essence of populism is that the problems out there are not my fault; they're somebody else's fault. That's populism writ large. And the problem is the swamp in Washington. The problem is uh, the Chinese taking yeah, but, advantage. But, but the problem right. is I the mean, other that's thing. The thing. Now, it's not now it comes down to something different. <laughs> when you're in the position of going from the campaigner to the position of being president, Government. you have to take responsibility for sure. what you do. And now it's a matter of, of explaining to the American people why what I have done with regard to regulations has created this. Mm -hmm. What I have done with regard to tax policy has created. What I haven't been able to do with regard to Obamacare is is going to result in this. So it's it's a very different thing from campaigning yeah. to governing. That's actually yeah. a really interesting point because something I disagree with strategy-wise, something that the Trump administration seniors like to do across the board is before they address a problem or in tandem with addressing the problem, making sure to point out that this is not their fault. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually undercuts their messaging. I, I think that it's like it's like when when you're a child and you know the first thing you say I didn't do it it's not my fault do, right yeah it, it, you're all <laughs> but, well, you knew that making, answer quick you're, you're immediately problem. making yourself suspect yeah that, you know I, I think the problem is is that President Trump ran on and and the people behind him and populists believe that government's the problem not the solution so then what happens when you become the government? That's really tough. That's a good All point. Of a That's a very so good point. So he's got to continue to say, I'm point. not part the of the problem, yeah. when now he is yeah. the government. So he has to continue to fight against the Senate. He's got to throw bombs at Mitch McConnell. All these things. Right against he the thinks, executive branch, his own executive branch. Right. The whatever. intelligence community and the State Department, deep state, and all that narrative. There you go. You know? Versus yeah. what I think the left is, and de definitely President Obama, that government's the solution. Mm -hmm. You know, government can fix together. We're going to get together and share. And we're going to solve all the problems. I really think it's like that simple. Wait a minute, didn't they I do that with the think, Obama administration? Totally. Yeah. I happen to think that government's always the problem, that they sort of step in and everything they touch except for national security, military, policing, we can't do that on our own. But basically everything else they touch goes to I garbage. thought about that the other day when I was taking a, a tag off of a mattress. Yeah. <laughs> Look on there about how many government organizations have to approve the quality and safety of that mattress. It's unbelievable. No wonder these things are so expensive. By the yeah. way, the police Sorry, are going to get you. It, it says by law you're not supposed to rip it off. Yeah, Haven't I wouldn't have admitted warning? on television that you took <laughs> yeah. the label off. You could go to jail for that. My kids point that out. <laughs> You're like, you could go to jail. <laughs> Everything that made him such a great candidate makes it harder for him to be president, yeah. right? Because he was effectively the opposition party, mm -hmm. and he was able to, to you know, it. point fingers and say they're wrong. Well, now he's actually responsible, and it's much more complicated right now because, sure, he does have that swamp to deal with and sure he's got a lot of, I mean he needs to make a lot of change he needs to be that disruptor that goes in there and shakes things up but it, all those other people they're afraid and don't don't forget none of them would have campaigned like Donald Trump campaigned yeah, they right. all thought he was crazy <laughs> so they still think he's crazy so uh, getting stuff done I mean President Obama, regardless of what you thought about him, he was a gifted politician. He was a gifted orator, but he was also a gifted politician because guess what? He got stuff done. I mean, you may not like Obamacare. I don't like Obamacare. He got it done. He got it through. And this is well, what the president he worked with. He worked with the mem he worked with the leaders in Congress. He worked with Pelosi and he worked with Harry Reid. It was it was not just Obama. It was it was the very effective leadership that the Democrats had in both the House and the Senate. I oh, mean, no, just you, may, you may dislike Pelosi. You may dislike <laughs> Pelosi or, or Reid, but and there are plenty of reasons not to. But they got stuff done. Uh, they yeah. passed legislation, and yeah. that's the difference. That's yep. what we're not seeing with this Congress. Very good. I think we solved it. We've got like 30 seconds. Anybody yeah. need to oh sell anything goodness. here? Because you've got 30 seconds. <laughs> you, you got a book out. Or you can buy Lessons from the Prairie. I will sign. Oh, send it here to Fox, 1211 Avenue of the Americas, 10036. I'll sign it and send it back. Our mailman <laughs> thinks I'm crazy because I get like a dozen books a day and I sign them and send them back. It's very wow. fun. I love to hear from you. It's very fun. Also, people are laughing on Twitter that they saw our marital spat at the end of the oh. show. Oh, well, we get over like any. Real. Yeah. Like any couple, we get over those we, spats We never disagree. Quickly. I mean, that was yeah. like the first time in only time. forever. Only time. Right. Only time ever.
I think our time is up. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 you. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. See you tomorrow.